If you have been told that you have fibroids and that surgery might be the next step, it is totally normal to feel overwhelmed or unsure. This video is here to help you feel more informed and in control before you make any decisions. Hi, I'm Brooke, I'm an obstetrics and gynaecology doctor. And today we're gonna to be talking about myomectomy, a surgical procedure that aims to remove fibroids from your womb. So we'll go over why myomectomy might be suggested for you, what the alternatives are, the different types of procedures available, and what to expect before and after surgery. I do have a separate video that explains all about fibroids and the different options, but today we're focusing on the surgical options. So first up, what are fibroids and why might you need surgery? Fibroids are non-cancerous growths that develop in or around your uterus. They're incredibly common. Up to 80% of women will develop them at some point in their lives, often without any kind of symptoms. But when the fibroids start to cause issues, that is when treatment might be recommended. Surgical treatment might be recommended if your fibroids are causing heavy and prolonged periods, pelvic pain or pressure down the pelvis, feeling like you need to pass urine all the time, they might cause a difficulty getting pregnant, some pain during sex, or a combination of all of the above. So options for surgery usually involves either a myomectomy or a hysterectomy. In a hysterectomy, your entire womb with all of the fibroids are removed at once. On the other hand, a myomectomy just removes the fibroids themselves and preserves the uterus. The myomectomy is usually a longer operation. It can be more tricky and involve more blood loss, but it does allow you to keep your uterus, which is particularly important if you're hoping to become pregnant in the future. If that phase of your life is over or you aren't planning to have any kids, then a hysterectomy for fibroids is usually more straightforward, less risky, and also means that you wouldn't need another surgery in the future, for example, if further fibroids develop if you just had a myomectomy. So if you've got fibroids, are you considering any surgical treatments? Let us know below. So are there any alternatives? Well, yes. Depending on your symptoms, the fibroid size and the location of the fibroids, and of course your personal preferences, especially around fertility, you could be offered some other options first. Sometimes if your symptoms are manageable, your doctor might just suggest a watch and wait approach, keeping an eye on things with regular scans. Medication is another option. We can give you hormone treatments that can just aim to control the bleeding or even try to shrink the fibroids over time. Then there's uterine fibroid embolization, which is a minimally invasive procedure where tiny particles are injected into the blood vessels that feed the fibroids in order to block off their blood supply and cause them to shrink over time. Another option is like focused radio frequency wave ablation, which uses the waves to destroy fibroid tissue. But this is quite a new procedure and it's not available everywhere. All of these other options options have their own pros and cons, particularly when it comes to your future fertility. And a myomectomy is often preferred if you are hoping to become pregnant in the future. So what are the different types of myomectomy? There are several ways that a myomectomy can be performed, and the best approach depends on where your fibroids are, how big they are, and how many that you have. Your doctor will help you to decide on the right method for you. A hysteroscopic myomectomy is the least invasive. It's used when fibroids are inside of the womb cavity, known as submucosal fibroids. The surgeon passes a small camera through the vagina and cervix, so there's no need for any external incisions. The fibroids are then removed using specialist instruments and fluid is used to expand the womb. It can be done as a day case and recovery is usually quite quick. Next up, we have laparoscopic myomectomy. It's also known as keyhole surgery. This involves making several small cuts in the abdomen and then inserting a camera and surgical tools. The fibroids are removed and the uterus is then repaired internally. This method tends to mean that you have less pain, smaller scars, and a shorter recovery than if you have open surgery. It's a great option if your fibroids are moderate in size and in number. So for example, if you've just got one big fibroid that's sitting on the top and causing you discomfort when you're sitting forward, for example, a laparoscopic Laparoscopic myomectomy can be a nice way to remove that one large fibroid. And then there's a robotic assisted myomectomy. It's essentially an advanced form of keyhole surgery. The surgeon operates through small incisions using robotic arms, which allow for very precise movement. It can be particularly useful if you have large fibroids or if they're awkwardly placed, difficult to reach. The recovery from robotic surgery is similar to laparoscopic 
plastic surgery, but this method isn't available everywhere. And finally, open myomectomy is also called abdominal myomectomy. It's a fibroid removal surgery that's performed through an open cut in your lower abdomen, similar to a cesarean section. The cut might be vertical or it could be horizontal. And this approach is usually needed, as opposed to having laparoscopic surgery, if someone has larger or multiple fibroids, because it allows your surgeon to access your womb directly. Sometimes you might have been told that you have a few fibroids, but actually once your womb is opened, many more fibroids might be found that couldn't be seen on imaging. When we do this surgery, it is a good idea to remove as many of the fibroids as possible in the same procedure to avoid the chance of you needing more surgery in the future, because if we leave behind some smaller fibroids, they could grow larger over time. But the main downside of open myomectomy when compared to minimal access surgery like laparoscopy is it has usually got a longer recovery time and more post-op discomfort but it's still a very effective and safe procedure. Another important concern is sometimes the cavity of the uterus might be opened, which can have implications on future pregnancies. One of the benefits of an open myomectomy is if we have large fibroids, for example, a 10 centimeter fibroid, we can just remove that straight through this open incision, which might be about 10 centimeters in size. On the other hand, if you have minimal access surgery, so you have a laparoscopy, you probably have a one centimeter cut. So if you need to take a 10 centimeter fibroid out through a one centimeter cut, we to cut the fibroid up into small pieces and then remove them. We do that at laparoscopy by placing the fibroid inside a bag and then in the bag we do morselation, we cut it up into small pieces. But there are risks associated with morselation which your surgeon can tell you about. But that's why I say one of the benefits of the open surgery is you don't need to do morselation. So if you had an open myomectomy, let us know what the experience was like for you. What should you expect before and after each type of surgery? Well, before surgery, you'll have some routine investigations. They usually include blood tests, an ultrasound scan or an MRI scan in order to map the fibroids. And then you have a pre-op appointment where you'll meet the surgical team, you can ask any questions and sign your consent form. If you're having general anesthetic, you'll be asked not to eat or drink for several hours before the operation. So let's talk about recovery. Well, if you're having a hysteroscopic myomectomy, you can usually go home the same day. You might have some mild cramping and light bleeding for a few days after, but most people are back to their normal activities, going to work, etc. within a week. If you have a laparoscopic or robotic assisted myomectomy, recovery tends to be quicker than when you have open surgery. You might go home the same day or after one night in hospital, and you'll probably have some abdominal soreness, some bloating or shoulder tip pain from the gas that's used during surgery. But this usually settles quickly afterwards, and most people are back to light activity after a week or two, and then back to their full activities by three to four weeks after surgery. Open myomectomy has a longer recovery. You're likely to stay in hospital for one to three nights, and the incision might feel sore, and you'll need to take it easy for several weeks. You should expect to need four to six weeks off work, potentially longer if your job is very physically demanding. And you should avoid heavy lifting and vigorous exercise during this time. Now with all types of myomectomy, you may have some light bleeding for a week or two after, and your next period might be heavier or it might be more painful. Your surgeon can give you personalized advice on which pain relief you should use, the wound care, and when to resume activities like sex or exercise. So what about your future fertility and pregnancy? Well, for many people, preserving fertility is a key reason that they wanted to choose a myomectomy. Most people do go on to have healthy pregnancies afterwards. However, depending on how your uterus was repaired, your doctor might recommend that you should wait a certain amount of time before conceiving, around three or six months, to allow that uterine scar to heal properly. Now, in some cases, especially if the uterine wall was deeply cut, or there were multiple fibroids removed where we had to go into the cavity of the uterus. A planned cesarean section might be advised in any future pregnancy to avoid a very small risk of uterine rupture during labor. So a myomectomy can be life-changing, especially if you've been living with pain, heavy bleeding, or pressure symptoms for a long time. Like any surgery, it's not without risks or recovery time, but it can also offer a huge improvement in your quality of life. So you deserve to understand all your options ask questions and feel supported in your decision. There is no one size fits all answer. It's about what's right for you and your body. So I hope that this video has helped you to feel more confident and informed as you prepare for your next steps. And if it did, please like it and subscribe to the channel or share this video with someone else who might help find it helpful too. And if you have had a myomectomy and you feel comfortable sharing your story, it could really help somebody else. So please leave it in the comments below.